Chapman. Our rescuers are going to uh, conduct a uh, first access for the front door. We're going to conduct a, a dash lift and then a complete side out. So without further ado, gentlemen. Now, as you watch them conduct this demonstration, you may notice that their tools have an LED display. The new E3 smart tool delivers real-time user information to assist the firefighter in the job. So not only can a safety officer understand the battery uh, power level of the user's tool, but the user themselves no longer has to push a button to see exactly where their battery status is. In addition, as you see later, Rick there with the cutter, in any cut scenarios where he's in a blind cut and may have trouble seeing the movement of the blades, the LED power indicator tells him quite clearly where is the cutter in its power stage? And it will indicate when the pressure relief valve goes off, giving him actionable information to change his uh, maneuver more quickly. Now in this scenario, Anthony is using a 555 E3 spreader to gain access for that door removal. And at first he's going to peel away that body panel because in this scenario, in this dash lift, we need to make some relief cuts in that lower A-frame. And Anthony's gonna improve his gap for that upper hinge. And they're left with numerous choices here for this door removal. We could spread it off. We could use the spreader to improve the gap to access for a cut. In this case, he compromised the top hinge completely with a spreader while Larry takes the common sense safety precaution of wrapping that uh, door window frame with the webbing to limit where the door will eject to. Now Rick is making a very strategically placed relief cut. Notice his placement, this is very important. His relief cut is behind the strut tower. This is required if that cut is made in front of the strut tower, the dash will not pivot in the correct place. So for a, a, a high speed frontal end impact with intrusion, you really need to be very careful where you're placing that front relief cut. While Anthony advances this rescue by doing what we call an A-post rip, this is a technique where to make extrication go a little faster, rather than using the cutter to sever that A-post, Rick on the cutter is going to start working on that back door with the cutter, while Anthony uh, rips apart the B-post in a horizontal fashion with the spreader. This is done by finding the wire loom hole, which is usually large enough to insert your spreader tips. With the high amount of force delivered by that spreader, we can easily rip that post in half. Now, as you can see, one of the advantages of an A-post rip is it allows a thicker entry hole for the cutter blade. So it actually can be a very effective as a, as a first attempt to sever that post. Now Rick's completing where the A meets in with the firewall to ensure that the dash lift works correctly. Now in this scenario, you'll notice Larry is using the ram to basically shore up the A post and this is a scenario where with newer cars, it makes a lot of sense to use your ram and your spreader in tandem to conduct your dash lift, especially with cars with a lot of aluminum content. And this is because the A-post will collapse. The, the aluminum is a little more brittle. So in this scenario, we're going to ensure this dash lift works correctly by using that spreader and that ram in tandem. 
You'll notice, even though we're going to do a side out later, we have made no cuts to the upper A. This is because Larry is using the, the intersection of the B post and the rocker as a pivot point to help lever up the dash. And as you'll notice, Rick is going to work on that side out by approaching the B post at the bottom first. Very, very important to cut that B post from the bottom first because we don't want an upper cut to the B first to lead to the B post swinging into your patient when you go to make that bottom cut. So order of operations, again, real important. And as you'll notice with high strength steel, a lot of times even after the cut, you can often get a cutter jammed in there pretty good. So Larry assisted with a little lift on the ram to make the cutter removal easier. And Rick's using the 789 cutter just to finish off that, uh, that B post at the bottom. And as you can see by that pop, this is a high strength vehicle for sure. Now you'll see they're going to strap that B with a webbing, again, to control the ejection of the B post. Notice Rick's cut uh, position. He's approaching that B post from 90 degrees. This is made possible by the Hearst Jaws of Life box blade uh, design, which allows approach to a B post from 90 degrees. This is critical because the cutter now can swing 90 degrees in either direction without swinging into your patient. We're going to finish off this scenario with an A post cut so that Larry can tent the roof. And now we have a well-tented roof, all with our E3 tools. Let's hear a round of applause for our rescue specialists. To see these tools at your firehouse, any of the EWXT waterproof tools or the new E3 tools, call your Hearst Jaws of Life distributor. We'd be happy to come out to see you in person. Thank you.